Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Alex from TCG Discussions, and I'm giving you the first ever Gamer Dojo winning deck profile for the locals that we had today. Um, I just want to give a few quick shout outs. Shout outs uh, first to Jason Neal and Gamer Dojo for uh, hosting uh, the locals event. It was really, really fun. Uh, shout out to everybody who showed up. It was small locals. Um, I'll talk a little bit about um, the round matchups after I get through the profile. Um, and then shout outs to Joe Newell for Metal Leader, Matt. Um, huge Dark Raleigh fan, so having having this Matt and playing on this Matt today just felt right, felt good. Um, so yeah, uh, let me get through the list real quick because um, there's some card choices that I decided to alter for uh, the best of one setting that we had today, and uh, it, I'm glad I did. It came up, and uh, just a uh, a few other uh, things to kind of like talk about about matchups and kind of like dangers that you can have for this deck. So you got to kind of watch out um, on some stuff. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into it. So Dark Brawly Leader, we all know what it does. It's metal Leader. Again, shout out to Joe Noel for that. Super really cool. Look forward to playing with this next time at Locals. And uh, for the list, we start off same. Four, Savage Rush. Four, Toa, Union of Magic and Science. And four, uh, Parasitic, Dragon Ball. This is just right. Um, I was never wanting in any of these 12 cards here. Um, it, it just felt great to have access to be able to draw into this, draw a Toa, which is the same thing as drawing this, um, and uh, Power Burst, which I'll talk about when I get to, uh, a little bit later in the profile, was super clutch. So uh, these 12, super great. Uh, four, Uncontrollable Berserker. Card's great, um, but honestly, um, while great... Uh, I find this card to be pretty kind of like circumstantial. It's a little bit weaker than the others. Still mandatory for it. But um, basically, like, uh, this card's like really good, uh, like against Sin, but it has its like issues. Like, there's lots of, there's lots of ways that like can't get around barrier, which is kind of weird. If your opponent's forward's, uh, board is blank, it's kind of weird. And um, it's a little bit iffy. Uh, you'll play it. Hopefully to try to get value out of it, and then um, you'll try to, you know, you know, beat down as you usually do with Dark Brawly. But I just want to say this card, while fantastic, necessary for the deck, uh, sometimes underperforms due to unisons and uh, other things that it can't hit. So, yeah. Four of the MVP. Every time I play this deck, it... It just kind of gets better and better and better. And Realm Ravager, just being able to take a card out of my opponent's hand is ridiculous. Uh, hitting a drop, uh, it, it, again, just super ridiculous. Uh, there was an attack. I swung the leader, combat out, put a draw ape down in the uh, you know drop area. And then I just took card from the hand and hit the draw ape. So super, super good. I, I think this, this card, fantastic. It really overperformed today. Uh, next, we play four of the blocker. Uh, not a lot to say about this guy. Um, again, really clutch. Uh, just being able to provide that extra defense, not rely on the negates of the deck is hard. Um, and with Protector of the People, this uh, this card literally got insane. And I'll talk about that uh, when I get to it. A uh, 2-7 drop. Uh, I did hard cast this for two energy uh, to play its effect. Um, and, uh, there's, it, it's iffy, um, because again, tapping to energy for this card just doesn't feel as good as like tapping to energy for Demigra or, you know, uh, leaving it open for negates or for, um, uh, like recursion plays or spamming out more 30 Ks. Um, it did not, heartfelt plea did not come up at all. I didn't have it at the time I needed to awaken. Um, I dug for it in one game, and I just didn't feel like committing more resources. I didn't feel it was a wise idea, so I didn't continue to try and draw. 
uh, but I did evolve um, in the last round into this, and it took three cards, which I guess is good. Um, so yeah. Two arc fell plea, still a really good win con in the deck. I just didn't play today. Um, but in my previous games where I, I have had it and played it, it's been um, crushing. So I think that it's still necessary to play. Uh, four of uh, the co-MVP, this card. Um, this is just a bonkers card. Um, if it lives, if it, if it sticks for more than a turn... Um, Playing another one of it in a Realm Ravager is just nuts. Uh, I had a I had a game in the, the last round where I sacked my Realm Ravager on the board, and then um, this this was this and Realm Ravager playing the same turn, and then the next turn um, I went to play a second one of these, and uh, brought back the Realm Ravager after sac sacrificing it for the uh, leader effect. So um, this card's just insane. Um, if you play Dark Brawly, I just definitely recommend this card four because, you know, you, you can put some uh, uh, one or two of them in the drop area for your leader effect, uh, but you also want to draw and hit and see at least one to two of these a game. And, uh, yeah, really good. Really, really good. Uh, also against Vegeta Unison, this card's attack factor comes up faster. So, really good. Uh, two, tag team. Um, this card was okay, I should say. Uh, since Shenron can really make this card just kind of, um, like, useless <laughs> uh, with its 4-drop. So, um, on that, it was really, 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 uh, like, extra pressure. And it was also, I will say, it being a blocker was really good defense as well um, with protecting the people. And like I said, I'll talk about that in a second. Next, we play for the Super Combo. Not a whole lot to say. It's... Really good. Two, uh, Demigod's Thrall. I was right. This is a, two is a sweet spot. Um, I, I just really think that, uh, you don't really need to play more, uh, than, you know, more than two. And trying to hard cast it to get under Virginia of Unison is just not really optimal because there's a lot, there's lots of things you can do in the deck already to kind of like defend yourself from them. Like, between your leader effect and, like, what a lot of aggro decks can do in your blockers, you just, they, I mean, you don't really need to play multiples. Um, and it, it all depends on when the Vegeta use, and I guess, also comes down. Like it, it would be a lot, there would have been, like, a whole other turn that I couldn't put aggression on if it came down a turn sooner, and he played it on turn three. Uh, but also, at the same time, our cards bonkers uh, in restoring the drop area, um, and hard casting and attacking with it is still the same thing. If your opponent does not out this card when it's on the board, uh, you're just going to be getting free advantage. Free advantage. Um, two, uh, Mass and Brainwash No More. This came in today. I decided to literally put this in the main deck over Meki Gabora in the tournament. Uh, primarily because I felt that stunning a card for a turn um is not as powerful as uh baiting my opponent into over committing into a lethal strike and it's also a 30k uh card that can be milled off the leader so i decided to put that in and i don't regret that at all this actually came in, in the last round uh made him fully invest into a, a leader swing with double strike and then uh put this card down and just lived and then negated the last attack against my life Got, bought my turn back with the negate and it was really good so um i think that uh this card is more of a main deck worthy card than i probably gave it a little bit more credit for uh but meki gabora against certain matchups like red brawly dark brawly so on and so forth can easily be justified as this you can just find your opponent's like pivot point or curve point where they're going to be like really trying to swing the game into their tempo and stun them so i think that there's room for both and i will say mechie Kibura is a really good card against um the the gd unison because it's also a card that can attack at it which um this deck suffers from being able to handle a little bit so um honestly though i felt fine with the amount of negates and stuff that i play so it was you know it was kind of 
not too bad of a, a side out and switch, but overall really like this car, performed very well um, and did its job in the last round. So yeah. Uh, next four of the card, I cannot talk enough about. This card is so good. It is so good. Um, like I, I was, I talked about this in the 40 minute version. If you watched it, if not, I totally get it. it's 40 minutes long. Um, but playing for this has been very, very good since I've decided to play it at four. Uh, power burst, just being able to negate an attack and get a one drop back. Think about it this way. You're also getting back 5k combo power. If you don't need the card, like the, the Savage or the Toa, if you already have a couple in hand, um, it also gave me flex options, taking the Savage Rushes out of the warp or the drop area to cast it for one, leaving me more fodder in the, the drop area to just bring a Brawly back for free. I can't express that enough. This card also directly searched, like I said, you're going to mill it off your leader, right? This card acts as four more ways to see it at a top five uh, search per term. I also want to say the ability to negate was just extremely powerful today because there were just complete shutout moments uh, where this card just said, no, it just like, nope, not that attack. We don't need to take that triple strike. We don't need to take uh, that double strike. Uh, so uh, again, I can't sing enough praises about this card in this deck. It's fantastic and phenomenal. Uh, two of the defensive MVP. Um, I was playing against Sen Shenron today in one of my rounds. And this card plus SS3 and the 30k blocker is just disgusting. There's just not anything your opponent can do when they have to swing, right? You negate, and then your leader is going to basically start off at 25k because you're going to block twice. That just literally says there's going to be way too much resource investment. Between the amount of cards you can rip out of your opponent's hand in this deck and this card negating one time, it, in late game situations when you have a full hand, this card is backbreaking, like absolutely backbreaking. Um, I was absolutely right. It's going to buy you back a turn. And then when you buy that turn back, you kill them. So uh, it, it just really, really gets in there and um, br like just brutalizes uh, decks. It just swings it straight back to your favor. So uh, Protected the People is really, really strong. And then to run up our uh, 50 card list, uh, we played one Champa and Kai. Um, so Champa, uh, as always, uh, is just Champa, Kai's Kai. I didn't get to play, uh, the Kai today just cause I, when I saw her, I didn't need to, <laughs> I didn't need to play it. it the activate battle was going to come down, but the Sin Shenron player, uh, scooped up. And as far as Champa is concerned, um, obviously being able to put, uh, just a double strike on any of my 30Ks combo, a little bit of cards, or my leader, for example, sacking all the cards after they've all attacked and then double striking them. This card just, you know, just does a lot and overperforms. Kai, obviously very good. So uh, that wraps up for the main deck. And then side deck, but it was best of one. So uh, there was no signing today, but I just kind of want to uh, go over it real quick. Uh, two mass Saiyan, two max, two secret ID, two Bardock. Uh, the one brainwash no more. Then uh, we swap the side to four Mechie Kabora. So if you want to play this list, uh, the Mechies uh, can just be in the side. And then uh, lastly, <laughs> this card would have definitely come up if I had played more than one more than one uh, game per round, and it, it would have came in. So uh, protect other people. I can't sing enough praises about how good this card is, especially in this deck when your leaders awaken. There is just not a lot they can do. If you block, like I said, if you block twice, your leader will be 25k. And that's before the fact you play four other negates in the deck. So um, their commitment to attacking your leader can literally just be snuffed out and shut down for a turn. And you can easily replay your 30k blocker. So you get another one. It's going to be the same thing. Your leader's going to start 20k basically. 
and we, you know, coupled with your negates, it, it can get bigger. So round one, um, played against Sin Shenron. Um, really grindy game because after, like I said, turn three, putting Vegeta Unis in a Fury was just uh, a lot of I can't do anything. And then while my Gohan was on the board, the four drop Shenron card kept saying that card's not going to attack. That card's not going to attack. That card's not going to attack. So I was kind of frustrating. Um, but uh, I made a mistake in that game. I forgot that, hey, Shenron can just pop a card, which is really strong. And uh, I just, you know, was not prepared for that and uh, tried to go all in on uh, a shotgun. Thankfully, I didn't commit everything. I committed what I thought would either be for sure game or uh, just basically like two two too too much advantage lost in in his favor um and the resources i kept end up edging uh allowing me to edge it out so um that was round one round two played against uh, Stri uh soul striker with uh just really good blue stuff honestly and um again it was one of those uh grind games um got really dangerous for a second because obuni can just put on a lot of pressure um, but unfortunately for him, his Obuni hit a, a parasitic Dragon Ball, so he didn't get the untap, and then, um, started warping cards, uh, and then, uh, the worst thing that could have possibly happened, uh, when, uh, he got to five energy, he counterplayed a card with, or he counter-countered a card with the Golden Great Ape Avenger, and then, so he tapped five, play that in. And then uh, the next attack I tried, he negated with Baby Hatch. And I was like, oh boy, here we go. And then I had brainwashed no more in hand and I had three lives. So I was like, okay, no negates on the triple strike. Let's see what he does. And he committed a little bit of resources, but it wasn't enough for me to be comfortable. So I just uh, activate battled, comboed out. And then um, swung with Baby Hatch. Um, and, uh, I negated that attack and then, uh, his, the baby unison gave his leader double strike and, uh, that's where brainwash no more came in and it was super powerful. He committed the Obuni token, the rest of his Obuni tokens that had an attack for the turn to it. Um, and it was really good, really, really good. Um, so, uh. <clears throat> That was the end. We only did two rounds a day. I know that's not a whole a whole lot of uh, testing field, but um, I, I do want to say that the deck did perform very well. Um, I felt pretty comfortable and not like I was in a terrible bind. I always felt like I had the resources to handle the situation that was put in front of me. Um, a few errors and misplays on my part and some sequencing that I think that in order to get better at the deck that I can definitely work on. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Protector real quick. So against Sin Shenron, when they go to vomit every Shadow Dragon on the board, if you play this card, the turn's over. So uh, two blockers plus that card against Sin Shenron just seals the game. It, it, it just sealed it. Like, he saw it, um, looked at his hand, looked at uh, his energy, and said, there's just no way. Uh, he didn't have anything to untap his energy. Uh, he was tapped, and uh, it didn't matter what Shadow Dragons he could put back onto the board. It was never going to matter. Um, I had three life with uh, a leader that was just going to get too big for his Shadow Dragons to swing at. So um, just really excellent card. Highly recommend it, uh, especially in Dark Raleigh, simply because, like I said, you buy back that turn and uh, your opponent just... I, like, this card plus two blockers can probably feel like Baby Hatch in a lot of ways. Like, you just don't want to... You just don't want to give your opponent it, the, the, the ability, the tempo to swing back at you. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's really debilitating because if you, uh, go wide and attempt to, to swing, it's just going to cost you too many resources in a mid to late game. At six energy, uh, this deck can warp a lot of hand advantage. I, I mean, a lot. And so, um, yeah. Um, 
And uh, just really want to uh, say that Demi Gras and Realm Ravager <laughs> ripping the opponent's hand just gets a little nutty. So um, really look to play those cards um, effect effectively and very efficiently. Um, and uh, just know your matchups. Like know what you're – have a game plan with this deck before uh, you go into your matchups. Um, Sin was a little bit of a trial and error because the 9-drop uh, – doesn't do a whole lot against this deck because Brawly, but um, that's where on like uncontrollable Berserker definitely shined today. He just was warping nine drops left and right, warping four drops. Um, so that's really good. And then, um, you know, just being able to kind of generate uh, slow advantage over time, the investment, the resources make them feel kind of pointless, um, especially when you can, uh, you know block do what you gotta do so um that's pretty much all i have to say i look forward to playing the second future hopefully uh play against some more meta matchups had a lot of testing against invoker which i saw a lot of success with as well um so yeah that's it for this deck profile thanks for watching everybody and this is alex from tcg discussions signing off see you guys next time